Good evening. It is Thursday, the 19th of September, 2024. Um, it is 8.40 p.m. UK time, and this is Behind the Streams, episode four. This is a show where <clears throat> I talk to organizers of stream events. I put together a lot of raid events and stream events um, to find out about them. And we've had things like Slow Mo Monday. We've had Fun Eclectic. Um, and now we've got Take Vibe because this weekend... On top of other things going on, like four years of coffee and donuts, mental health, ray train, my talk show, part of my journey, the 45th episode uh, talking about mental health, um, is also the one year celebration of Take Vibe, the jazz show put together by the jazz hobblers. Um, And again, it's interesting that we're featuring it on this channel because it's not just about 45s. When they started this new show, they decided it was going to be all vinyl format. So that is going to be something we're going to talk about. But here we go. In uh, alphabetical order, Butchie B. Evening. We have Fat Wax 45. Morning. Oh, we have Mark time. Lancaster. Evening. And we have Ouija. Hi there. So you are the jazz hobbits. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Yeah, apparently so. We sound Bunch like of grumpy old bastards. <laughs> It's like, oh, like oh, a, 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 a really aging bad boy band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah nice bit of product placement there, Fat Wax. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah. well, tea's just come in with me tea. Yeah. So, and she's put it in me, drinking tea. In me mug. So, I'll say. I just can't it's believe what I've managed to get all four of you on, on, on at the same time. It's great. I don't think we've done this before. So, no, we have. No. It's going to be a. It's going to be a fun. Actually, Butcher, you've not been on any of my shows, so it's... Uh, no, no, no. I, uh, I've managed to avoid it, haven't I? <laughs> so far. <laughs> you got me this time. In actual fact, I was... I, I was... When you... When you... I think it must have been a coffee and donuts stream when you came up... When the idea was sort of... First came up, and I think I was the first to sort of... And then I realised what I'd let myself in for. <laughs> It'll be fine. I, I it <laughs> <laughs> we're amongst friends and and people that we've known for oh, i don't know best part of four or five years now isn't it you know almost getting up for four years oh yeah yeah it's got to be four well it was definitely four definitely four well yeah, it's, yeah coffee and donuts is four years and then sort of going on before what we were doing was probably probably july i think was a 24-hour event yeah. so july 2020 is when i think certainly a yeah. few of us were yeah. sort of connecting from them but yeah. we have our first viewer guest we have tea cake Hi, tea cake now then 45 down the hobblers uh and tea cakes playing on coffee and donuts on cool. saturday so it's great we, we tried to make sure <clears throat> that we had slightly different guests on coffee and donuts to take vibe because we're also celebrating one year of take vibe on sunday yeah. so yeah. first of all butchie you're first up it's a jazz show. Tell us about what it promotes and why it's an important show for people to tune into if they're into music. Um, well, I think I don't think there's many shows like ours on Twitch. To be quite honest, I don't think. I mean, jazz is not um, is not prolific on Twitch, um, and I think the four of, between the four of us, because jazz obviously, like a lot of people get turned off when you when you say jazz. And I think that they don't people. I don't think people realise how sort of influential it, it is across the music. And like between the four of us, we cover a lot of bases hmm. of of what jazz is. We're all very. We've all we've all come to it from our. You know, we've all got individual styles. There's a point where we cross over, but we are. You know, we've all got a different angle on it, which I think is great. I think that's why it really works. Yeah. Good evening, <clears throat> Double P in the house. Good evening, Double P. Evening, Double P. So do you think, uh, and Fat Max, I'll ask you this, do you think that each of you comes with a slightly different style? So, for example, some of you got like more jazz funk, some of you got more sort of Latin jazz. Do, do you think each of you has a different sort of area that you particularly go for? Yeah, I think so. Like with, with what Butchie said, um, we... We don't have to get in touch with each other and go, oh look, we're I mean, we'll get we'll get the odd track that'll come through and we've all gone and bought it because it's a new release kind of thing and stuff like that. But I don't think from 
this, in, just in this last year, I think if maybe you've heard one track twice, that would be probably all you've heard um, because there is that individualness of us all. I mean, um, especially with Ma uh, with uh, Mark, he's he's come from the jazz side since he was a kid through his father. Um, I didn't even know I played jazz. Um <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> so I, I just, I just, <clears throat> and, and like, again, with, with, with what Butchie was saying, um, it's how it's perceived with with the word jazz. I mean, I um, I suppose, <laughs> has it got a trumpet in it? Yeah, well, it's jazz. Has it got a flute in it? Yeah, well, it's jazz. Um, so I think that... Um, if you're listening to the full four hours of the of the ray train with us playing, I think you can you can definitely see the whole spectrum of what jazz is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and exactly, um, you know, you're you're promoting that's that's what the show is. Um yeah. so Mark, obviously <laughs> he'd been referred to you as sort of coming from a jazz background from a kid. Yeah. So, you know, what's your earliest memories of jazz? My earliest memories, I can tell you, it was, I was about four or five, probably about four, and my dad was in, had a band in Essex, and they used to play in the local Labour Club, which isn't there anymore, it's been gone for years and years, in a place called Benfleet in Essex, and they used to do a Sunday afternoon session, and I remember that taking me, used to go there, it was morning, sort of early morning, sort of 11 o'clock till half one, something like that. that's what their session was, something like that. And then you go home, you have your Sunday lunch. But um, they said, take me down, get me out of the way, the house, so mum could get on me cooking the dinner or whatever. That's what it was like in those days. And um, I can remember sitting in this club with a bottle of pop, usually Coke, and a bag of crisps, watching this music, which I didn't really understand was jazz at the time. Um, and then, because I was four or five, you know, it was boring <laughs> because this is not this music. I don't know what this music is, you know, but obviously it gets ingrained in your brain. And so from that day on, my dad was all had bands for years and years and years. So right the way through, you know, he's still, he's still playing now. He's 85. He's still doing gigs. So that's 50 years. He's been playing for 70 years, um, which that's is a long, incredible. long time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, all the way through my youth, my, my teenage years, going going to gigs with my dad and my mum and my sister, and right up till about the age of what, 15, 16, not really getting it. And then round about that kind of time, I started to get it a bit more because I was being introduced to some of the kind of jazz that I actually now love. And there's certain LPs came out that my dad bought at the time. Um, and then I started to love it. And then obviously then I started to delve deeper and deeper and go listen to other stuff in the back with playing like Basie and Ellington and all that kind of stuff, which I didn't really, not didn't like, but didn't understand. I wasn't old enough to understand it really when I was eight or nine. Um, so yeah, it's just been seeped in my whole, my whole life has been, jazz has been there. And so yeah, and now it's a massive passion of mine. Yeah. <clears throat> and we'll come back to sort of DJing on Twitch about yeah. about jazz and, and what an opportunity that is. Um, <clears throat> so, Ouija, I mean, w when did you get into jazz? I'm assuming it wasn't sort of back in the 1920s that Mark was sort of, you know, <laughs> not, not that old. Describe. <laughs> I know, I'm, I know, I'm the oldest one, but I'm not quite that old. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so Ouija, yeah. I'm when really, did you, first you know? Get to me? It's nearer, uh, <laughs> nearer to it than all the rest of us. <laughs> I was sort of, um, I was sort of introduced to it through the Harmless compilations, um, Pulp Fiction series. Yeah, and a lot of the stuff that I was listening to, I didn't realise that that was classified as jazz. You know, because like we've talked about already, that it's got such a massive sort of um you know there's so many different sort of sub genres within jazz itself so yeah it was the, the the sort of heavy 
heavy funk sort of brassy sound that I got into in the 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 nineties, and that then has sort of led me into sort of getting more deeper into the 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 actual the jazz but i think compared to mark lancaster i'm a lot more interested in the the more modern jazz sound that's coming out especially like in scotland there's a massive massive jazz resurgence um i don't know if you're aware but um porto alto were up for a mercury award was it last week two weeks ago with the mercury awards you know in the year before that um, Fergus McCready, you know, was, you know, Rebecca Vazmat's got her own jazz label now up here in Glasgow. You know, there's, there's, yeah, it's that, that sort of where it all stemmed for me, really. That's amazing. Um, <clears throat> we'll come back to a few bits in there, but yeah, I mean, Rebecca's doing amazing things. I'm sort of really interestingly watching what she's doing and she's taking it globally as well and with the label and live stuff it's yeah it's incredible to see um okay so we got double p in and he said that you were talking about 1829 mark <laughs> um and we've got a t2 funk here as well and t cake is saying just realized altogether you're probably the pub quiz music edition ultimate team <laughs> uh, i probably need you on the team please <laughs> exactly. we, need, we need the 80s section you know yeah, we need to cover yeah. that you know the trouble with that is that we're so old we can't remember stuff most of the time i mean <laughs> our, you know, our track record is not good i mean me and butchie are, are particularly bad at this that we hear something on twitch that's a great record we buy that oh no no i've already got it i, don't, I did it last week last week i bought three <laughs> singles there was a, a chico hamilton single they just re-released brian Orgo. Jody Driscoll and Trinity, Indian Rope Man, and a Jimmy Smith single. And I bought all three, and I said to the lads, oh, I bought these, and Matt said, um, I thought you would have had those. He said, no, no, I haven't got, I haven't got them. And then they arrived, and I've already got the Jimmy Smith record, obviously. So I've got, I've got I, I can tell you what, I'll tell you what shows you played them in, mate. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I didn't have a chicken hammer. So I didn't have a chicken hammer. Yeah, well, oh, geez, like an elephant in that way. He, he remembers everything. I just can't remember what I've got. I did it again. I, I did it last night. I went around my mates last night and he played me. Um, he got CDs. He said he played me a Paul Desmond. Is that what? Is it Gabor Jabo, um, the Hungarian guitarist? He played an album because that's really nice. So I took a picture of the cover. I forget that. <laughs> got home. I've already got it. I didn't buy it, but I've already got it. But I, 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 got it. Um, I haven't got any records, honest. Just going to say hello to Danny Bounce, who says, it I don't know who the boy that. band is on screen, but I definitely would. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Without even struggling. <laughs> That's the first I've had of that for many, many years. <laughs> um, right. <laughs> Butchie. All right but... Butchie. Oh. Let's Sorry. talk about um, <clears throat> the, the, the graphics. Obviously, you do the graphic designs for each of the flyers each month not this month but each month so tell us about that and what the inspiration is behind them well it's just pure plagiarism mate uh you know what i mean there's no i'm not a, i'm not a graphic designer of of in any way shape or form um what i do for a living is sort of indirectly related so that sort of helps me but it's just literally i'm just looking there, there i mean it's the majority of them are like really really famous jazz album covers you know so it's just it's just sort of playing on those and it's like not that he's an inspiration or anything but you know like mr crumb who does yeah. all the sound uh, uh bombay during bombay stuff it's just you know what i mean it's just ripping off just a pastiche isn't it so it's just it's just fine um, all i'm doing is trying to find stuff that i can work but um i, I was happy to have this month off to tell you the truth because yeah. I'm, I'm i am running out of ideas <laughs> But it also screams jazz, doesn't it? You know, if anyone yes, looks indeed. at those flyers, it screams jazz. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, I mean, sort of that's the thing with the jazz album covers. I mean, obviously, Blue Note, uh, you know, fa so famous for it is it's that sort of style. You know, it's, it's there's a lot of style. Well, those Reed Mars yeah. covers are also great, aren't they? So iconic. Yeah, but you can tell it straight mm. away what it is. Yeah. Um, Double P says. 
they are called the Jazz Street Boys. That's how that's how that's how called that name. That's the boy band name. The Jazz Mag Boys. <laughs> Danny Brown, there's other things. God, there's a thing of the past. Yeah. Um, jazz Mag. Jazz Mag you know, actually means a magazine about jazz, not when we were yeah. doing it. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, Fat Wax. So, obviously, Fat Wax 45. We do coffee and donuts, and uh, it's good to be able to celebrate with you briefly here for coffee and donuts on Saturday. Yeah. Um, but obviously, the show, Take Vibe, is not just 45s. So was that a conscious decision to open it up to other formats? Definitely, yeah. I mean, um, it was spoken about um, when we was um, bringing it back. Oh, go on then. Come here. Connie just wants to say good night. Good night. Good night, Connie. Night, good Connie. Good night. Good night. All right, then. Sweet dreams. Um, yeah, so um, there's, there's only so much um, stuff you can buy on with, with some of the earlier jazz, especially on 45. So, um, and then, like I say, with, with, with people, um, well, not with people, with, with Ouija. I mean, he's going on about the Harmless compilation albums and, and some of the tracks that are on LPs, compilation LPs. Um, there was absolutely brilliant tracks, and a lot of those are only ever found on compilation LPs. Um, and so it was a, an idea that we we, uh, we we mentioned that, what about if we just, if it's just vinyl? It, it doesn't matter what size it is um but as long as it's on vinyl then should we do it this way and we was well it, it was a no-brainer for all four of us none of yeah. us was like oh i don't know don't know it was just like it works for me works for me sort of thing and um i think it opened it up massively um i know it did um for um Butchie, um, because he had a he had plenty of stuff that he wanted to play other than 45s. And Mark owned, I can see it right behind him, a sh yeah, shitload that, of yeah, that he's pretty much jazz and sort of funk there, actually. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. so um, it, it just it just opened up the show a lot more, um, and gave us a lot more, um, scope for the show, um. And again, with it being so um, multi-genre, just so many different yeah, flavors, yeah, like subgenres of jazz yeah, genre, yeah, so yeah. many flavors of jazz. Um, it just opens it up rather than just being oh well, I've got a hundred forty-fives that I, I think are jazz, and then I'm like, well. I'm playing 20, 25 of them a month. Yeah. So every four months, I'm just going to kind of repeat. But um, it, it, I've got tons of albums, so I'm, I'm happy with that. Although the only records that I've probably bought in the last year, especially in the last year, have been for, uh, Jazz 45s anyway. So I... Um, I've, I've really stuck in, but going back to because um, there's, there's nowhere to dig around here, and, I, and I'm not very good at traveling anywhere to go and dig anymore. I, I just can't do it. So I will troll the internet um, for records that are costing me fifty p to three quid, and to me that. If there was coming out as brand new singles now, I'd, I'd I'd still love the tracks. Do you know what I mean? So, and I think the big thing with uh, with the forty fives as well again is the price that they're, they're coming out at now at fifteen quid. I'm thinking, well, fifteen yeah. quid, I can get <clears throat> at least five really good records that I yeah. think are very good records. Yeah, for that fifteen quid. Yeah. And I think part of it is, you know, we've been doing this over four years now <clears throat> on Twitch. Um, 
and you know you guys have sort of moved into sort of different formats of vinyl i've started moving into a little bit of digital as well just because you need that little bit of ability to just have different types of music because you know 45s are great but they don't hold everything um so i think like you say you can't sustain just buying 45s you know because it's too expensive yeah yeah sorry i just i just wanted to add though like I, it, it was very much a point of it It wasn't, you know, to play just 45s, it just wasn't sustainable. But the irony for me now is that actually in this first year, eight of the 12 sets would have been, from me, would have been strictly 45 sets. Yeah, right. but, but having that breather allowed me to, to sort of have a couple of months off of not playing 45s and get a set together, whereas... When when it was all strictly forty fives, I felt really under pressure mm. to keep it fresh, and and to, to, to have a full set of. And also, when you the difference between playing jazz off forty fives and to, to album tracks is like they could be four times as long. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like oh, jazz tracks on a forty five can be two minutes sometimes. Yeah, you're lucky if they're three and a half minutes, whatever. So when they're an album track, they could be eight minutes. So it's just it just breathed the whole just changing the format. Just completely breathe new life into it for us, and you know, all of us. After the first sort of three or four shows, we were just like, oh, you know, this is just it's so great that we, we I don't know, not you, you feel sort of you're just not stag stagnated. You know what I mean? It's like we, you can just dig so much deeper into your collections. I think that's what yeah. it was me. The longer playing, the longer tracks was just a, a breath of fresh air because it just meant that you know, uh, you know, I've got. For example, I've got um, you've got your mojo, mojo working by Jimmy Smith. I've got it on an EP, and it's about two minutes, two minutes long. But on the album track, it's eight minutes long, and you can play that. So you can and go to the toilet. So yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. I can go and make a cup of tea and all that. Hey. But but it is that it just and it just jazz is a is a is a generally a longer format of music. Um, it's not pop music. It's not instant. Some of the sort of soul jazz things. You know they are, but in general, it's they're meant to be longer, longer tracks, and that's that's what I like to listen to. Uh, you know, when I'm doing, I do I do other shows for uh, on radio and stuff, and I like to put in a, a few longer tracks. You know, you don't want to be putting one so, the, the the whole side of um, Sketches of Spain by Miles Davis because it's 25 minutes long because that's just daft playing it on on Twitch because you know we're gonna what are you gonna do. <laughs> But, but it's, a, it's a long. Uh, you could go shopping to Tesco's. <laughs> I never thought of that. But you know, but it's just that it's just that it's just nice to be able to play longer tracks, and I I, I love doing that. Yeah, um, I can say hello to a couple more people as well, then we'll carry on. So we got Klaus uh, over Klaus. in Germany. Yeah, pick up Klaus. Uh, you'll find it was great to meet him in Hamburg, and he's uh, coming next year as well, which is good. Um, uh, Double B's in here. We got T Two Funk in here as well, and he's saying uh, eighteen pounds for a track you already got on a twelve inch. I mean, yeah, it, it's getting really that cool. way with some forty fives. It's, it's getting bizarre that the, the the price. I mean, again, you can see why um, the digital uh, move. Some of them are moving to digital now, and um, the 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 forty five to to be to be spending that kind of money and then going oh and Juno are just plowing through all this stuff mm -hmm. coming out and it's hundred and ten tracks hundred and fifty quid. It's just Hello. like. And then you post it, you, you no. I mean, there's a few and they've, come, they've, they've come back. I mean, you know, I, I use Juno. I'm sure everyone uses Juno. Yeah. Um, but obviously, they've now sort of cut back. I think if you spend 75, it's then free shipping. Yeah. Uh, which is something good. But I sort of noticed a bit of a plateau. Five records. 45s. <laughs> um, yeah. they, they were getting sort of 16, 17, but they seem to have dropped back a little bit, sort of 13 ish. Yeah. 14 at the moment which is still a lot of money but can most of us when we started doing it when it was like five or six yeah. but you've yeah. got labels like coal mine and that, say that. Coal mine, yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're like 850 that's so and i think yeah, yeah. um the bongos are really doing reissues of a lot of the brazilian so so how can some i don't know i just don't get it I was like, talking about this. with dynamite cuts right yeah. 
I mean, we've all got to talk about Dynamite Cuts, but at least they've got proper cover on. You know what I mean? They're like mini albums, aren't they? So yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some sort of justification for them being 15, 16 quid because, you know, there's artwork. Whereas if, you know, there's, there's 45s that are just like in a plain white sleeve and you're like, yeah. you know, there's nothing extra to it. Is You know, I just don't yeah. understand the price difference when, and also people- like, Going back to coal mine and Daptone, they're coming from the states as well. It's not their impulse. They know, must have yeah. their own. I reckon they have their own pressing plant. You know, oh, they, they must do, mate. Yeah. I talked to a mate of mine about this on uh, on on Tuesday because he's a massive coal man, car machine, Daptone fan as well. Right. Uh, they're saying, you know, that they're so cheap. They must have their own pressing plant. It's the only way they could do it because it costs you eight or nine. I mean, sign those. So cheaper when you stuff's yeah. coming out. I mean, he does. He keeps it down his price, but you know, it's going to cost five six quid. A record to press it, I would have thought. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Possibly in the rest, yeah. Um, just going to say hello to a couple more people. we got uh, Rolling Adam in the house saying Hi, good Rolling evening. Adam. Um, Adam. We have <coughs> Sherelle LaFunk. Uh, salutations. Oh, yeah. Evening. Um, what are we saying? Uh, Tony said he bought that new Tron track off Bandcamp for 20 quid. Um, yeah, one cost 20 with postage. Yeah. yeah so I bought it off Juno. What I held back. Yeah, but again, it's, I mean, it's difficult because that is a classic, I think. And, you know, that is something that's probably going to hold its value, that, that particular yeah. 45. And I think that's that's the other thing that's worth thinking about. But uh, Rolling Adams saying Crown are cheap. Yeah, Bongo Crown, are yeah. Cheap. Yeah. Um, Tony again saying they must own the pressing plant. Yeah. Uh, double P. Two tracks, one is instrument, instrumental, uh, £16 yeah. pounds is a lot. That's silly. Uh, rolling Adam saying amount pressed and licensing, so that's probably the dynamite cut stuff. I think um, like, even dynamite cuts, I don't mind paying what they cost because they're all properly licensed and yeah. the artists are getting royalties from it. And I think that's yeah, everything's cool. licensed with dynamite cuts, right, it's properly. It's, and then, then you know, you get loads of booties out there, we all know that, and we all buy them mm. because they're, they're the only way of getting the track sometimes. But the, the artist is not getting anything, but with dynamite cuts. Maliki makes sure that everyone's getting their, their cut. I say you don't mind paying it, really. And they're all yeah. great, aren't they? They don't Definitely. really do cut. No, I have not I've not heard a bad one. I've not, not one where it. I can just go, ah, oh, waste of your money on that. No, 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 none, of them, none of them, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ouija, I'm going to come to you uh, for one last sort of little section and then we'll go through a record or two each, maybe, that you've picked out. Um, but Obviously, you're celebrating one year of Take Vibe. So two parts of this question. You know, what's it been like over the past year? And have you got anything special planned for your set for this Sunday? Uh, no to the second question, as I normally just put Wing what it. like on the day. Um, but I might actually make an effort um, for, <laughs> for, for Sunday. Uh, I'll see what happens really but um, it's been really really good I think um, as the lads have said the fact that we've now opened it up to not just 45s really allows you to you know to dig deep into your collection and, and find stuff there's a lot of stuff that I've played over the last couple of months that I'd actually bought the 12 or I'd bought the album for a different tune than I actually ended up playing. But just due to where my ears are now at, mm. I was much more appreciative of, you know, the other tracks on the album or the B side of, of the 12 or the 10 inch and thought, Oh, actually, I, I really quite like that now. And, uh, you know, I'm going to, whereas before I had just been zoned in on one particular track. So I think that's what's been great about it. And also it's just lovely having these three other idiots involved. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, o- 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 apart from when we're streaming, we do actually, you know, we are in contact with each other about every day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which must be because obviously, you know, part of this weekend is a mental health raid and it's not just about raising 
awareness of calm and obviously funds, but it's also a, awareness of mental health. Now that what you've described sounds like it's really important. So it goes way and above the show, oh, way and above Twitch, way and above jazz. It's the fact that having this group and this project that you all work on helps your mental health. Yeah, yeah it does. Well, so, yeah, definitely. Um, and I, you know, I look forward to further down the line when we actually are able to meet. You know, physically, we've 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 had a few failed attempts, um, but you know, it's highly likely that it's going to happen. Sort of, yeah. if yeah. I, you know, so you know that also is is fantastic. I mean, Christos, you and I are really lucky in that we've seen each other quite a lot. Yeah over the last few years um, through different things we've been involved in. But, you know, it's just really nice to know that if I am in London and I've got time and Butch is available and Mark's available, yeah. we, we yeah. can hook up and, you know, eventually I might be able to get to Cleethorpes and see Mark. Yeah. So me and Matt have met, then we met a, 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 a thing that, it's a coffee and donuts thing in tent in, in Chelmsford, wasn't it? I think we met up there. Yeah, right. So yeah, yeah. I've met all of you in yeah I have met all of you individually but yeah. not together. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. is the only only one I've not met. But at some yeah. point the stars will align. Yeah, they will. They will, brother man. It will happen. Yeah. Well, I, I'm actually thinking that what we need, what we really need, what I mean, this may may or may not be a question that's coming up, but what we actually need is to do something in real life. Yes. Yeah. You know yes. I mean, the jazz hobblers. Yeah. But yeah. and if in, in a way, I was sort of thinking about it earlier, and that's what's as much as it's great that we're all in different parts of the country and it's and obviously Mark and I are quite close together, but yeah. it, 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 that's it, it, as much as that's a positive thing, it's a negative thing because it's not like, oh, actually right lads, let's get a night started up and yeah, you know, yeah. let's do this. Let's do this I, for real. Um, Sai Chiba is doing a, a thing in Farrington. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The black cat thing. He's yeah. got the black cat, isn't he? Yeah. I've not been yeah. able to get to him unfortunately yet, but, I mean, so I used to do that years I've, ago. I've, about seven jokes, I've been invited to DJ at it, and we're oh, just organise. Uh, so it'll be next year, mm. too, but we're trying to organise time. So I'm going to run the idea by them that we get you guys involved, and you know that might be the begin. You know, yeah. a way of doing it. I don't know. Yeah. We'll see what happens, but. Well, regardless yeah. of that, mate, if, if you're there, I'll be there. There's no, there's no. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. That. I'll come up for that. Yeah. I mean, because I know Sai anyway. I mean, Sai, me and Sai have known each other for about thirty years. You should have yeah. the corner of me, but um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be great. It would be great. But yeah, Christos, to answer your question, for from a mental health point of view, it's just it, it's a, a a wee gem to yeah. have. Definitely, definitely. And it's great. And we've all got our own little friendships. We've all got our own little groups and, and, you know, different things going on, which is great to have all of these connections, you know, because we've all been sort of brought together through Twitch. Um, yeah, right. I asked... Sorry, I was going to say, it branches out more than that, doesn't it? Because yeah. I know you've done that Jazz Wednesday thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> you to that. And I've, I've done it, I do it every month now. And, you know, you get another a group of people mm. that... It's a little looser than you guys in terms of what's it's jazz. Very nice. It's definitely it's yeah, a nice it's show funny. that sort of yeah, based around. Very, that, very nice. It? But it's it's great fun to do. I love doing it, and it's a it's a whole new bunch of people who you know they all live on the west coast of America, most of them, you know, yeah, or or in Canada, and you you know you're never going to meet these people, but it's still great every month to drop in and play some tunes with them. It's great. And it's it's incredible that we've got this because of Twitch, and it's also, <clears throat> I think, I mean, I, we could probably just touch on it a little bit, and then we'll go through some records. Uh, obviously, there's the new DJ program which kicked in yeah. about six weeks ago, and obviously a, a couple of weeks before it kicked in, you know, including myself, I was like, right, what are we going to do? Preparing for the worst in case it all sort of didn't happen. But um, so far, it's generally seemed to be a positive thing. You know, yeah. have you noticed anything? Obviously, I think you've done maybe one or two shows since it came in. Uh, have you noticed um, on those and any of your streams sort of increased numbers? Um, followers have gone up for me. I mean, I've not got, I don't know, I've got about 508, 60, 70, something like that. but they've got, in the last two or three months, I've probably gone up 50 or 60 followers, which how it was before is actually quite a lot. I mean, you know, 
that since I did the um, the thing with ADP, AD, ADP, yeah, ADP, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I think I've got about twenty followers out of that. So I think that's that. I think that's to do with the DJ program, to be honest, because uh, people know where to look now. They want to look for a DJ, and you get people come in the room who you've never seen before anywhere. I have anyway. Yeah, yeah. not hundreds, loads but of it, news people. But it's, it's definitely an increase, and we've noticed it quite a lot on coffee and donuts, and so we're just sort of looking at it. But I think overall, for most people, it seems that viewer numbers are up and follower numbers are up and, and all of that. So, yeah, so hopefully it's just going to carry on. And, you know, we'll be talking in next year at sort of the two-year anniversary of That's Take good. Vibe and, you know, the five-year anniversary of coffee and donuts and things. But let's get on to some records. Um, let's start with you, Butchie. Uh Choose a record that you particularly love uh, in jazz and that maybe one that people will hear at some point, if not already, on Take Vibe. Well, I'm going to do it. Well, I've definitely played this on Take Vibe. I'm going to, because it is an LP, um, but it is a cheat because it is a compilation. But this compilation pretty much is, uh, was my gateway into sort of jazz back in the late 80s, early 90s. Again, that was through sort of the rare groove and the acid jazz scene. And it's this one uh, on B BGP, which was uh, a pro prolific label. Oh, yeah, got that. Great, great, great. So, first volume of acid jazz. And this is not acid jazz, the label. It's actually the majority of the tracks on this are uh, prestige and fantasy. But it's got one of my favourite tracks, which is ever, and that's Poochu, Got Myself a Good Man. But every track, oh, there's, oh no, there you go, look, Psychedelic Sally by Eddie Jefferson, such a tune. Every every track on this is, is just a tune. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I managed to pick up, so there's a track there, Houston Person, I managed to pick that up on seven, so mm -hmm. when we were just playing sevens, but the majority, like there's, there's Fun Kink. The Fun Kink, so, so good. Such a good, every tune they've done, just awesome. Called the, On this album, it's called Better Half. And it's not on seven. Do you know what I mean? So that is the beauty of what Take Vibe was, that it, literally I could play this album. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, this is this album's been so, such an such an influence to me. Um, and it's, it's funny because literally an hour before the show, I'd pulled out a couple of sevens. And then I'm like, what am I doing? As much as these sevens are as, as uh, mean as much, it's like that is that sort of was my introduction to jazz. Amazing, amazing, <clears throat> and that's why music is so important, isn't it? Because it's all those connections, um, and it's taking you back to a time when you picked it up, time when you first played it, all of that stuff, and that that's why music's so powerful. It's um, yeah, incredible. Um, Fat Wax, what have you got for us? Um. I'm not. I've got the obvious ones. Um, I have. He says. Not see that. Yeah, Donald Bird. Oh yeah, great. Dominoes. Yeah, great tune. So I know I uh, Mick Mesh up. I have a remix of that. Don't know who he is though. Oh, there, yeah, yeah there, there is. So we've. Uh, Got it on all all different flavors. Um, that was mine, um, and yeah, some tosser went and did a variant of that um, somewhere along the line. And um, I don't know if I've got a copy of that one though. To be fair, I don't think I have. I um, I, I, I sent it to you at two hundred quid, mate. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found it. <laughs> Yeah, excellent. <laughs> oh, that one's in the wax uh, cover. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Really? Oh, was yeah, it? Yeah. Um... <laughs> it's got the stamp on it. <laughs> oh, the stamp one. Yeah. I um yeah. So that was my in uh, my my first jazz love, should I say? Which went through obviously because I I I got into it through um hip hop. So with with that track, it was uh, Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince. Um, and and again, we uh, sorry, no, it wasn't. Well, it was that was Chess, it was Sets of Sonic, should I say? Yeah. 
with the uh, the Domino um, remix because um, there's there's two variations of the Stetsa Sonic one as well. Um, I, I was thinking of change then, but uh, yeah, there you go. The uh, the heads don't work as well as they used to. <laughs> 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 Jesus. So um, yeah, so that one for me um, will always be my uh, number one jazz record. Donald Baird as well. To be fair, anything that. That right. guy has um, touched. So, um, flight time, um, another one. Um, so, but yeah, Donald Bird for me all day long. Amazing, um, Mark. I know Ouija hasn't got anything planned, but have you got anything planned yeah, for well, the I, I might, I might one check. year anniversary? I've got, I've got a couple, um, but the first thing I said to me when well, I, I didn't get jazz, and my dad played me a record when I was about 14, 15. Um, and it changed my view and I just loved it. And it was, and it's, it's uh, Keeper of the Flame by Richard Cole. And that's the one that's got New York Afternoon on, um, which is now on a seven as well. Um, there was a, a charitable organization put this out in memory of Richie and some raised some money for some of his charitable causes. Um, so that album came out in 79 on news, um, just an amazing, amazing record. And it, I'd say, and it just changed from there. And I thought, oh, okay, there is jazz I do like. And that, but then as I got a bit older, it was these. And first up, it was, the, it was the Paul Murphy Jazz Club um, comps. Again, that has lots of very classic stuff, Getz and Gillespie and Sarah Vaughan and people like that. It's though. He's the guy who runs Jazz Dream Records. And then, um, I know Matt's got all these as well, the Jazz Juice comps. Very much like um, Matt with the Acid Jazz, which I've got that as well. That's a great. But those Jazz Juice comps and Street Sounds just introduced me to Latin stuff as well. And they're all just so amazing. And I think there was eight of them. Um, and ever since, that's when it started. When that jazz dance scene, and it just changed my life musically. Because I was very much just into indie at that time, and it just changed everything for me. Amazing, amazing. Uh, Ouija, what have you picked out? Yeah, well, I've picked out uh, the first one is uh, Who Bought Our Name, which is uh, again on the wonderful Paul Murphy label, and it's the uh, the Take Five EP, Walking on the Moon and Golden Brown which uh, as covers go are just absolutely fantastic um yeah. and you know paul's label has gone on from strength to strength and i think i could safely say that he hasn't released a bum seven no. as far as um, they're all absolutely superb um another absolute belter for me is uh is this one Ryan Porter, who played trumpet for Kamasi Washington. Okay. His album, The Optimist, is just, it's it's superb. Um, I may play some of that on Sunday. Excellent. If you can be bothered to uh, get a set together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never got a set together. No. Uh, what I was going to say, so I think, Butcher, you probably plan you're, you're, more than any of them. Do you want to hear what my set is, though? Right. <laughs> so my set, right. So this is what so how much of a nerd I am. So my set. So you remember when it was the Jazz Hopper's first anniversary, mm. we all put together a, a mix for the Forty Five Kings mix club, yeah. Yeah. and it was always my intention to do a volume two. So what I did after our first year was because the majority of the sets were uploaded to YouTube. I track listed all of them and then I went, oh, so yeah. So with, with the original, the volume one we did, we all nominated three tracks that we was basically, they were sort of like, they were either crate staples or they were tracks that you would use to introduce people to jazz, right? So jazz, it was like a jazz hobbler's um, guide to jazz or whatever. So for the volume two, it was, I was actually collated together all the tunes we played over that first year. And then basically it sort of works out if, if 
if it was two, two of us played it, then it would get into the set. So I think, so I haven't actually decided on what tracks I'm going to play because I think there was about 25 tracks that two of us or more played. So it is essentially, it's like what we <laughs> played in the first year. Uh, <laughs> I spent hours going through all the YouTube videos. I mean, it, it's only really Mark and I that all, all of our sets were up there. I mean, yeah. I think between like Ouija and Fat Wax, they, it was half their sets that were up yeah. there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, I mean, it's full of classics. It's basically, you know what I mean? It's just wall-to-wall -wall classics. Excellent. So, who's playing this on there? Uh... No. Well, yeah, I think you, you are. Yeah, <laughs> you're up first. There you you're go. Up first. You're you're all yours. first Is that why you wanted to play 10 a.m. Weezy? I thought yeah, yeah. you wanted to play. <laughs> yeah. Right, I've yeah. got I've got my radio Buena Vida commitment on Sunday, so ah yeah yeah, yeah he just wants to play the Brian Organ for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, and also wants to play. I can't even remember. Two, 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 three, two. What's that? I can't remember doing that. Best no, of it... three track huh? thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely yeah, no, no recollection of that no, whatsoever. Uh, Marky, I cannot remember that at all. Well, okay, <laughs> I, I can remember at least one of the the, uh, the tracks, um, which I, I was thinking of playing on Sunday, but it might already be. Uh, in which which was? Step. I was going to play the uh, that uh, Harry Silver with Andy Bay track, um, which I can't oh, remember the title of. No. No, no, it won't be any. It's basically to refresh your memories. Just check out the mix on the the uh, on Mixcloud. Okay, but um, it won't be any that were in that first one. Oh, okay, right, okay. It's good. all tracks yeah. that didn't yeah, make that. Was, up. Yeah, I was so, thinking of playing a, a few classics that we, you know, that I've played over the years that are big ones. Yeah, I've got what, some new stuff I want yeah. to play. And I've been buying a lot of fusion stuff, and I want to play a bit of something different. So we'll see, and some Latin as well. And anyway. Yeah. But that's that's the question. So is the is the ray train um all for, strictly forty fives or is it mixed? No, no, mixed. it's mixed. Yeah. Um yeah, I'm, I'm writing into two strings, so it'd be Yeah, it's definitely I don't I'm think we, we might even have some no, we were gonna have some digital DJs, but I think ADP's not able to play. So yes, it's whatever you want. It's yeah, not it's, Yeah, because I know not. Two, two strings directly after me. So yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's playing digital, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, see, of course. Um, yeah, no, no, we just, um, it's just, like I said, it's really just to start conversations. And obviously, putting this together, <clears throat> it's been great for me to get you all together on this show, you know, uh, from a friendship level, but also on on a community level, because that's the other really important thing that sort of come out of all of this for the last sort of four or five years. Um, but Fat Wax, you know, we've obviously got our own sort of coffee and donuts community as well. Um, have you yeah. found there is now a Take Vibe community as well that sort of tunes in regularly? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, we, 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 we get... Um, the coffee and donuts crowd as well um because i find that um i still get a lot of um the same people which is great i mean if they want to but i think that the way i dj no but i mean i suppose the only thing on take vibe is that you know i'm going to play some sort of jazz i mean when i play coffee and donuts you never know what I'm going to play. I mean, I had no idea that I'd end up playing Chicago House last Saturday morning. Uh, that one on the books at all. I had a massive pile of um, DJ Newmark, Jurassic 5, all laid out on the side. And I thought, all oh, right, I'll do a DJ <laughs> Newmark stroke J5 crossover sort of stuff. And I had it all all up there because i'm trying to sort through my records oh, i'll do that and then all of a sudden i ended up well fucking nowhere near um i ended up playing chicago house um so on the, on the jazz with the with the jazz crowd and that and we get um a bit later on because we start at 10 o'clock we we do seem to get the early risers of america coming through um yeah which is always nice. Um, and now that the DJ category um, is now open as well, I do find that there's um, I, I know I definitely have, apart from the bot thing where that went a little bit 
crazy on the new followers. Oh, yeah. Um the 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 following list now is is huge weekly yeah. Um, yeah to what it what it was i mean you got a steady half a dozen maybe on a coffee and donuts but lately i'm dozen plus now mm. when, when i'm i'm playing so which is nice it's great uh, and there's a lot of new names hell of a lot of new names and a lot of names that have, I've noticed are coming back as well. I, I mean, I know it's when you, it's a, if you get involved in other streams as well, when you, when you're spreading your wings, I mean, the AD, AD's uh, calm thing every week. I know I picked up quite a lot of new followers from that. And you think, oh, this is, they're, just, they're just following you because you're part of the stream. But then I have about four or five in my coffee and donuts thing. And then the jazz Wednesday who I've never seen in my streams before. I took, and they thought, oh, well, we're going to see you. And that's mm. that's really nice, because I obviously enjoy what you play. And then, you know, but, and they come back, which is a lovely thing to, it is, that's what's so lovely about Switch, is you pick up all these people from all over the place and you've never come across them before. Um, and and that's that's you, know, you see someone playing, you think, oh, I'll go and see them, because I saw them yeah. last week and they're great, great to watch. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they pop up in your chat, and then you happen to be on Twitch when they're going live. It's great. I love it. You know, to catch a stream for someone who I've only seen as a sort of name in my chat. It's it's, mm. it's brilliant. Uh, it's brilliant. Right. Okay. I think we're going to sort of call it to an end uh, in a in a few moments. But you know, last thoughts. I'm going to ask the same question to all of you. Um, why do you love jazz so much, Butchie? Well, for me, as with everything that I sort of play, I always come from like a, a dance floor angle and it's that is sort of, you know, the, the dance aspect of it. Uh, you know, you can get a wiggle on. There you go. Good answer. Fat Wax, what about you? Um, I think it's a mood thing for me. Um, I think especially in the of lately the way that um i play is the kind of mood that i'm in as well so again probably the chicago house thing last week came in because I, I woke up and i was feeling really energetic kind of thing whereas i think the jazz on a sunday morning just fits right as well i i i, I think if we did jazz on a saturday morning i think it would be a bit weird i think it works super well on a sunday and i i like the chip i'm i'm opposite to um matt I, I i i i'm not a dance floor person i think i like the soundtrack side of it um Again, and a break great. i need to find a break in there <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, sounds like with breaks uh mark same question to you it's a bit of a mixture of both uh mark and matt um I like I like the groove. I mean, I'm not a dancer, um, but I like uh, my first love of jazz was from dance floor jazz. So there's that. It's also a mood thing as well because I think it's you know it's, I, I you know, I'm off in the mood for jazz and I play. But being the son of a musician um, who who's got no mu musicality in himself at all, it's the musicianship for me. Um, hearing a great sax player or hearing a great drummer or a bassist or a pianist, you know, all these names are legends and you hear a solo and it's just like, oh, it's just amazing. Like it just, just, it just lifts you up and you just, it, it takes you away. I like, that's what I think. It's the musicianship. Nice. Amazing. And finally, Ouija. Uh, I would say the diversity and the drums. <laughs> now go a bit of drums. <laughs> Always the drums. Uh, also a very, very good answer. Um, right, guys, it's been good. Let me just set the raid. I think we're going to go and see my man in Germany, uh, Platt and Pat's official. Uh, he's got a regular show. Oh, he's not been banned for playing Queen the other week, then. <laughs> um, well, no, one, no one's yet been banned. No. Yet, Everyone's getting sort of don't play this stuff. I think yeah, I don't know if like he's got, got any, a warning, but he was, we were watching him the other morning, and he, he played Flash by Queen. And everyone's going, what are you doing? He was just laughing. He was like, no, oh, oh, well, I forgot. Just... Yeah, that's the I've one. Done, I've, done, I've done a forgot. I've done one. Yeah, yeah you've got to push the envelope, haven't you? 
I oh, yeah. well, you're, you're going to see what it is, and I think at the moment we're okay. I think we're okay wasn't at it, the moment. Was it miscellaneous was saying at the weekend last weekend though? I watched her set, and she was saying that you know, Prince is on the on the don't play list, but she said there's 250 Prince songs. Yeah, that you can play. Yeah, but, yeah. It's it's all about who owns the particular yeah. rights. I thought and, he owned everything. Of his, I mean, I I can't remember what I played. Want to be? Did I play? I want to be your lover. It was one of the really, really, really like. early ones. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I just didn't think because I was just pulling records left, right, Thank and centre. Yeah. Um, and then I realised myself, and then uh, I think Josie was in, and she went, you're playing Prince. And I was like, mm. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> take yeah. that out. And then I thought, oh, I'll get a warning, but it came. About five in the morning, okay. Yeah. Uh, an email just saying um, it was noted, sort of thing, that yeah. you'd uh, played a, a restricted um, musician. Uh, yeah. The naughty, slap, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the naughty, so there's yeah. a slap. There's a slapped wrist and stand in the corner for ten minutes and don't do it again. So mm -hmm. yeah, 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 definitely. Cool. Right. Well, that is. Great, thank you guys. It's been an awesome chat. Just hang on there thing for thing a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone who tuned in.